Well, before I get started, I just wanted to say a word. Um, I got an email from a client of mine in uh, Italy, and today, the 25th of April, is uh, the anniversary that they celebrate of the liberation of Italy during World War II by the Allied troops, and uh, I just think that it's something that uh, I didn't know, and uh, it's interesting how to them it's a national holiday and here we don't even think about it. Um, but anyway, it's just nice to know that they do celebrate uh, the uh, sacrifice that our troops made and troops from all over the world made to uh, liberate them from Mussolini and from Hitler. And uh, Okay, I'm going to uh, show you something here. I got we, uh, Shirley K. Johnson uh, with uh, SculptTools.com um, uh, on Skype. Um, I was talking to her about tools and I made a little piece of clay in the shape of what I thought would be a, ni a nice little tool tip uh, that uh, kind of concave right there and uh, comes to a kind of a ridge right here and a round tip there. I told her that might be an interesting uh, tool shape, and so she made one up and sent it to me. Um, she also made another one up that I suggested was uh, kind of a wedge uh, for, you know, just making textures and stuff like that. Uh, the one thing I found out about these tools is they stick to your prints that you uh, print out of your printer. <laughs> I found that out purely by accident because I had this print sitting on the desk and uh, put this down and it stuck to the picture. It doesn't hurt it, it just, it's, it just, you know, it's like uh, silly putty. Uh, it, you know, it just sticks. Anyway, um, also, uh, this is a variation of this idea here, just a little bit bigger, less of a concave, more of a flat surface, and uh, the ridge as well, so it comes into a kind of a slanted, thing there. I think these will be interesting to try out. Um, and, and, and I told her about how I use my thumb to make hair textures. And I said, I wonder if we can make a tool that has a thumb in it. And <laughs> she made one. And she had a hard time getting the thumbnail, which is a fake thumbnail <coughs> that women put on their fingers. And so she, I, she had to use screws to keep the thumbnail down on the tool, but it's it's just like a thumb. It's got the groove on the side. I haven't had a chance to try that one, and I'm going to try it at some point, but I just thought I'd show you that we came up with some weird ideas for tools. Um, so anyway, these three I'm going to work with today. And then I finally found this tool, and I don't know why this is on a spring, uh, but it is, and uh, but it's a, a round tip tool that sort of rolls as you uh, go over the clay. And uh, interesting, I think. But anyway, I just uh, thought I'd show you these tools uh, from SculptTools.com along with the other tools that she's got. Uh, this one is my favorite right here. Um, I don't know if this, this one's a, uh, kind of like the other ones, uh, a uh, experimental tool that she sent me to see if I, could find use for it or if it would be good. I I would, I don't know if she's starting to produce these yet, and I don't know the uh, item number, but uh, they certainly would be uh, incredible, uh, an incredible tool. I use this more than anything else. Um, but anyway, this tool here is SL49. That's the uh, tip that we I helped design. Um, this is SL49. Um, I think that stands for Sour Lemon. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> SL53. Uh, this is the uh, other tool that has the ridge and the kind of like a triangular shaped uh, end. And this is the, the one that I made out of clay and showed her. And this is SL52. Wait, wait a minute. P-SL52. And all these have, I think, a P in front of them. No, I, no that one doesn't. This one does. P-SL52 is uh, the 
item number on this one. So if you want to, it, it, it's it's soft, but it's it's resistant, which is good because when you're moving clay, you need to have something that uh, has some strength to it. Okay, it's time to get started on this guy's uh, pants. Uh, he's been standing naked for a couple of days, and it's time to cover the buns and everything else. Every time I do uh, a pair of pants, I I sort of do it for the first time because I'm every one is different and a different stance and uh, all that stuff. So what I'm doing right now is something I've never done before. I've made pants before, but I've never made them in this position. So it's like uh, doing something you've never done before, and uh, that's what makes sculpting so damn interesting because. You just do things differently every time. The thing about making wrinkles in pants, they got to make sense all the way around. And uh, so that's why I'm sort of just blocking in shapes. And now I'm going to use this uh, new tool to see what uh, how this works out. decide whether to put pant uh, boots on or not. There wouldn't be any trouble to do it. I think I will put boots on him. Then we run up to about his, uh, just below his knee. Looks like from the pictures they uh, would have worn their spurs, so I'll put spurs on as well. All right, I'm going to leave it here. I'm going to live with these wrinkles the way they are right now. The uh, boots are 
well, somewhat sketched in. And I think I like it. Um, I'm going to go over to the studio tomorrow and set up a, a, a Levi-type shirt, uh, a uh, denim shirt, and have it hanging down so that uh, I can see how it would look, uh, the wrinkles in the shirt and all that stuff. All right. Have a great night, everybody, and uh, and happy Liberation Day in Italy.